I'm going to talk about the novel 1984 and its ambiguous ending. I say it's ambiguous because what it appears to be, I don't believe it actually is. This is the lecture entitled White Always Mates, and it's a lecture on hope and despair in 1984. So I would encourage you to think about the ending before I get into the lecture and think about whether you think it's predominantly one of hope or one of despair. So initially it appears that Big Brother has won a complete victory. Winston's been completely indoctrinated. He's betrayed Julia, which was the goal of the ministry. They've gotten inside his head and he's been conditioned and controlled completely. And I think this is the traditional reading of the ending. In fact, he doesn't even want to see Julia in the end. And even he admits that he's committed the final and decisive betrayal of his own convictions, stating that he does indeed love Big Brother. This is where my argument diverges from, from the traditional one, because I think this is a complete misreading of 1984. And in order to, to fully understand why I diverge in this at this point, um, I, you have to look at the subtlety in the text and you need to look at markers that have been uh, hidden throughout that parallel the journey that Winston has been on and that Winston continues to travel on. So Winston's beaten Big Brother and won the battle for individuality, and I'm going to show you with some contextual evidence that Winston himself is the key to our knowing how he is, has won, or how he, rather, will win. So Orwell plants symbolic evidence to support this theory throughout, and this suggests that there is, in fact, always hope. So Winston, though he isn't an impressive hero physically or even mentally, possesses an impressive reservoir of strength. Even under extreme duress in the ministry, he's able to fight his oppression as he holds Julia close to him, and he openly refutes O'Brien's arguments. But, being mortal, he realizes that he can't win the battle openly, so what he does is he retreats into the bowels of his mind. If you look at page 294 of your text, Winston openly tells the reader that, for the first time, he perceived that if you want to keep a secret, you must also hide it from yourself. This is a pivotal moment in us understanding his shift in his way of thinking and his way of defeating Big Brother. And I think the idea here is that your own individual um, powers uh, to express yourself and to think freely are those which are beyond the control of the ministry. So by this, he's suggesting in your conscious mind, you might surrender but in your unconscious mind, you need to reserve your own convictions. We're not quite there yet. We'll just go back a slide. So on page 293, just a page back, Winston informs us that he's gone further than hiding a heretical mind beneath an appearance of conformity. He's retreated a step further. And so by giving up Julia, he's indeed violated part of the heart that he wished to protect. But Big Brother cannot penetrate so deep as to change his innermost convictions. They can see Julia, but they can't see the hatred that he hides. So there's another quote on page 294. I don't have access to my text at the moment, um, but it, it's particularly relevant about survival. So he tells us then his goal is to survive until such a time that his unconscious mind can emerge so that his thought crime can go unpunished. So if he hates Big Brother at the time of his death, then they have failed. And you can see how this connects back to my original argument. We also know that the bullet that Winston does fear um, will come, but it never actually does come in the text. He lives on indefinitely, and regardless of this fact, uh, we know that before he dies, his convictions will return to him. He's told us as much throughout the text. So, um, the next part of my argument, we'll switch on to this one, focuses on memory. And on page 259, Winston informs the reader that something that exists in memory, though no longer concrete, still indeed exists. And the party can control and change the past, which is indeed their slogan, but they can never destroy it completely. So though Winston's paperweight has been physically destroyed, and that, that of course, is a symbol of uh, the, the material world, um, how many other uh, paperweights are scattered throughout Oceania? And, uh, and again, the paperweight is like a microcosm, too, of um, an idyllic world. So jumping to the end of the novel, we find that Winston can't control even his own memory. So on page 308, he says that uncalled a memory floated into his mind, and that was the memory of his mother. And even though Big Brother would complain that she is an unperson, there she is. 
she continues to exist in his unconscious mind, which will come back to him regardless of what they try to do to indoctrinate him to suppress those kinds of memories. And, and I mean, his job literally is to change um, the past memories and rewrite them. And yet he continues, and we see this through his everyday behavior, he continues to question um, how information is being changed before his very eyes. So his conscious mind tries to deny that memory of his mother and calls it a false memory, but his unconscious mind retains the image and continues to plague him with it. Or maybe plague is the wrong word, uh, perhaps reward him with it. So by a series of confusing slogans, we know that who controls the past controls the future, and who controls the present controls the past. However, we see that even in Winston, Big Brother does not control the present completely and can therefore never control the past or future completely. So my last argument, my third argument, um, so we're looking at symbolism, subtextual evidence, hatred, self-awareness, good and evil, contradiction, hope, survival. Let me break this down. So my last argument focuses on the subtextual evidence to support these ideas in the final chapter. So first on page 301, uh, the quotation is uh, a violent emotion, not fear, but a sort of undifferentiated excitement flared up in him. And I believe this uh, feeling is hatred. When Winston believes that Oceania is threatened, his unconscious responds with the most raw emotion. Second, the language that Orwell uses suggests that Winston cannot control his mind. There is, he says, um, something that he was only half aware of. Third, Winston tells us that in chess, white always mates, or symbolically, in other words, white or good always wins over black or evil. And he says on uh, page 302, did it not symbolize the eternal, unvarying triumph of good over evil? So his circumstance is temporary. Good will eventually predominate. It will emerge as his unconscious mind at a later time. He isn't dead. He hasn't been completely beaten. And there's always hope for more people like him rising up despite what the ministry is doing. So again, on page 303, Orwell writes that Winston's heart stirred as awakening sleeper moves about before they rise. So too is his heart um, coming alive before his unconscious thoughts return. So next, there's uh, through a direct contrast uh, with what we know to be true, Winston quotes O'Brien, and he says, what happens to you here is forever, which is an, an evident contradiction. Perhaps Winston's betrayal of Julia is indeed forever. You can't go back and rewrite the past of him uh, betraying um, the person he loved. But the psychological and physical torture that Winston underwent is only temporary. It's re and being repressed by his memories are those contradictory images. So finally, on the symbolic level, just as a victory is announced on the telescreen, Winston picks up the white knight, which represents good, and drops it to the table. The knight is dropped, perhaps even been momentarily set back, like he himself has. But we already know that ultimately white uh, always mates. As long as this hope survives, there's greater hope that better days will come, and perhaps a utopia will be created, rather than Orwell's dystopia. So I'd like you to take your novels now, and or a digital copy of the novel, and argue, find, find problems in my arguments, or uh, find proof that I'm right. So find three pieces of evidence to either support or to reject my claim that this ending is in fact one that is is a ruse it's a um it appears to be an ending of despair when in reality it's an ending of hope and that concludes the lesson um i'd also encourage you to continue reading your books and to find your own path uh, to analyzing Winston, um, orwell's work because uh, there's a lot that lies buried in the unconscious or subtextual reading of this text